Hi, I'm Keith Boykin, and I'm honored to be your Master of Ceremonies. Welcome to the 19th Annual Zorro and the Hurston Richard Wright Foundation Legacy Awards. I'm here today at Barnard College in New York City, where Zorro and the Hurston was the first black student to graduate from the school and walked on the campus halls behind me. This year marks the foundation's 30th anniversary. Sadly, we're not able to host an in-person celebration, but we hope to gather everyone together for a big party next year to mark both our anniversary and our 20th Legacy Awards ceremony. So stay tuned. In 1990, two pioneers embarked on creating a safe and supportive space for black writers to share their stories. Marita Golden and Clyde McIlvain established the Hurston Wright Foundation because they understood the importance of creating a venue for our voices. They understood the power of community where black writers can connect with one another and where they are encouraged, recognized, and honored. In the past 30 years, the foundation has continued to grow and today offers a week-long writing workshop, a two-day weekend workshop, master classes, and readings throughout the year. And every October, we host our Signature Legacy Awards event, highlighting the best of the best in black literature. Not even a pandemic could stop us from honoring this extraordinary event. So while you relax in the comfort of your own home, let's join in virtual togetherness to celebrate black literary excellence. To kick things off, Please welcome recording artist, Johnny Britt. Hi, thanks so much for having me. My name is Johnny Britt. And my first song I'd like to do is from my Marvin Meets Miles album. I hope you like it. Mother, mother, there's far too many of you crying, crying. Brother, 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 brother. There's far too many of you dying. You know we got to find a way to bring some love in here today. will go down in history as a year of tremendous loss. For the Black community in particular, we have lost much to the pandemic and to racial injustice. And on top of that, we have lost our heroes in literature, film, and politics. There is much to mourn. Please join me in a moment of silence as we honor those we have lost. Community is nothing if not resilient. And it is through our art, through our stories, and through our literature that we find our strength. The work of the Hurston Wright Foundation is as vital now as it was when it began 
30 years ago. As awareness of the depths of racial disparities increases across the nation, so should Black voices grow louder. Our stories must continue to be written. Hurston Wright remains firm in our mission to discover, mentor, and honor Black writers. Thank you all for joining us in celebrating and honoring the best of Black literature. Since 1991, more than 90 college writers have been recognized for excellence in fiction and poetry. And we are immensely proud that many of these talented writers have fulfilled the promise of the award by publishing books and becoming important contributors to the cultural discourse throughout their work. More than 80 students from 65 colleges and universities submitted their work for this year's contest. The award is not based on age. Any student enrolled full-time in an undergraduate or graduate school program anywhere in the United States is eligible to apply. Since 2013, we are extremely fortunate to have the generous support of Amistad, an imprint at HarperCollins Publishers, which provided the $3,000 cash prizes for this year's College Writers Award. To present the College Award, please welcome Ms. Marita Golden, co-founder of the Hurston Wright Foundation and acclaimed author of more than a dozen works of fiction and nonfiction. When Clyde McIlvain and I formed the Hurston Wright Foundation back in 1990, we knew we had struck upon something special. But to see it still flourishing today, 30 years later, makes me deeply proud especially to see the College Award honoring the, the extraordinary talent of emerging writers. Past winners include Tayari Jones, who won in 2000. Her most recent work, An American Marriage, was an Oprah Book Club pick. Our 2006 winner was Natalie Bazil, whose novel, Queen Sugar, became the basis of the hit television drama of the same name. And Britt Bennett won in 2014. Her two novels, The Mothers and The Vanishing Half, both have made the New York Times bestseller list, and The Vanishing Half was recently nominated for a National Book Award. I could go on, but suffice it to say, the College Award continues to be an integral part of the Hurston Wright Foundation's mission in recognizing the exceptional work of writers at the beginning of their literary careers. So, to this year's winners, let's begin with fiction. The 2020 College Award Fiction Prize goes to Sakina Hoffler, a PhD student in English and Comparative Literature at the University of Cincinnati for her story, The Gifts We Don't Need. Novelist Naima Koster, author of Halsey Street, judged the fiction competition and said of Sakina's story, quote, this is a complex and sensitive exploration of family secrets, sisterhood, and silence. The narrative voices, fierce, and the events wholly memorable, a powerful, propulsive story. Congratulations, Sakina. Let's hear Sakina read a brief excerpt. The summer I turned 17, my father returned from Egypt with Yasmin, your sister. Those words hovered above our heads and stalked us like some lonely gin. Before he left, Omi said things like, of course Jasmine is welcome in our home, and of course Jasmine should get to know her sisters. But after he left to teach a three-week intensive course on a diaspora and pick up Yasmin, Umi dropped all that familiar talk, and the most we got out of her was, that girl. Layla, that girl's gonna share a room with you. Can you clear out your drawer so she has some place to put her clothes? Can that girl even speak English? And now, the 2020 winner of the College Writers Award in Poetry is Sadia Hassan, an MFA candidate at the University of Mississippi for her work titled Prayer for the Mother's Brother. Poet Venus Thrash, author of The Fateful Apple, 
judge the poetry competition. In selecting Sadia's poetry, Thrash said, quote, what distinguishes these poems is the use of language, form, and imagery combined with compelling and substantive content to drive the poet's and the poem's messaging home. Congratulations, Sadia. Let's hear Sadia read a brief excerpt. October and a truck pulls out of an emptying night. Eight bullets empty a cartridge and a boy behind them drains the night of sweetness. November and our fathers drain the kettle up and the henny. Time doubles as ink stains the sidewalk, the streets, the rumors. There was a rumor November came for the streets and upended all the black. Our fathers bruised the debt, drained the bank, flipped the money, we move and so do our neighbors. There was a rumor time hollowed the years, home began to look funny. All a stain once November came and snuck past, the glass crunch crunching underfoot like so many blood dazzled leaves. Congratulations to these talented emerging writers. We can't wait to see what the future holds in store for them. Let's encourage more aspiring writers. The submission period for next year's college awards is now open, so please visit hurstonwright.org for details and share far and wide. We want as many black students as we can to enter from all across the country. Pleased to be here presenting the Hurston Wright Foundation's newest competition. The crossover award was inaugurated this year in partnership with ESPN's The Undefeated. This award honors proactive and original new voices in literary nonfiction whose writing exemplifies the undefeated, not conventional, never boring mantra. Almost 30 writers from over 20 states submitted their work, which was judged by Pulitzer Prize winning novelist Colton Whitehead, Arthur of the Nickel Boys, and the Underground Railroad. Congratulations to our inaugural crossover award winner, Melanie Farmer of Central Florida, for her work rolling a lady's guide to Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Melanie, a writer and educator, wins a $2,000 cash prize and free tuition to attend the Hurston Wright Writing Workshop, both sponsored by ESPN's The Undefeated. Let's hear Melanie read a brief excerpt of a winning essay. You'll see it like this. You covered your bruises for your grandmother's 95th birthday party. When you went to get dressed, you discovered that your training habit is now written all over your body in the form of tiny blood vessels pressed too hard and broken beneath the skin where they have leaked into circular shapes and jewel-toned colors. Standing in your underwear, you will examine these spots on your body. They are bright red, deep blue, and regal transitional purple. You like them. They are proof of the work that you've put in and evidence that you're not too weak to take it. You want to consider short sleeves so that you can wear them with the pride of a teenager with a freshly won hickey. They are the same kind of evidence. Proof that you are grown up and that you know something now. Something secret. Hi everyone, I'm so excited to receive this award and I would like to extend a huge thank you to the Hearst and Wright Foundation and to ESPN's The Undefeated. I would like to thank Colson Whitehead for judging the award and Clifford Thompson for leading my workshop in nonfiction over the summer. Additional love and gratitude go out to the professors and cohort at the University of Central Florida MFA program, my Saturday morning writing crew, and to my family and friends for their support of and occasional appearances in my writing. Thank you very much, everyone. This is an honor.
And now for our Legacy Awards presentation. The Legacy Awards ceremony is a year-long process, starting with a call to black writers and their publishers for submissions throughout the year. Every year, the foundation receives books from a wide range of publishers, including mass market trade, independent, and scholarly, all of which are publishing some of today's most thought-provoking black writers. More than 100 submissions were received this year alone. We refer to all of the nominees, finalists, and winners as honorees. That's because they have been selected by judges as the best of the submissions. To judge the competition, we invite previous Legacy Awards honorees to read in the categories of debut fiction, fiction, nonfiction, and poetry. A panel of three distinguished writers selected six nominees in each of the three largest categories and selected two finalists with one winner. In the smallest category of debut novel, the panel selects just three nominees with one winner. Tonight, we'll have one of the judges in each category announce the winners. Let's begin with poetry. What an honor it is to be here tonight to present the Legacy Awards for Poetry. This year's powerful poetry collections pull us through turbulent history laying bare the trauma of fighting to survive and our enduring hope for a better tomorrow. The nominees are Night Angler by Jeffrey Davis, published by Boa Editions. Davis's collection reflects on complex experiences of love, fatherhood, family, and loss through poems that express joy, anguish, longing, and vulnerability. 1919 by Eve Ewing, published by Haymarket Books. Ewing tells the story of the Chicago race riot of 1919 through the voices of everyday people trying to overcome racism, classism, and segregation in the city. And More Black by Ty Freedom Ford, published by Augury Books. Ford's sonic poems are an unapologetic examination of Black art, language bodies, and sexuality that simultaneously celebrate its beauty and investigate its complexities. Exiles of Eden by Lovin Osman, published by Coffee House Press. Osman traces displacement and alienation from its mythological origins to the present by connecting the story of Adam and Eve and their exile from the Garden of Eden to displaced people in the present. Library of Small Catastrophes by Alison Rollins, published by Copper Canyon Press. Rollins weaves together personal narratives and history to examine how one processes loss and trauma as a Black person in America. Syncope by Asia Wadud, published by Ugly Duckling Press. Through a series of prayers, invocations, and hymns, Wadud memorializes the African migrants who perished while crossing the central Mediterranean, as well as presents firsthand accounts from those who survived. And. The winner is Exiles of Eden by Lovin Osman. The judges wrote of tonight's poetry winner, Ladin Osman's Exiles of Eden is a tremendous achievement of motif, exploring the many ways the concept and violence of exile come to pass. Osman's lyrical investigations on being forced out of one's home, of forcing others from their nations, of losing and having taken from you a sense of self and history writ large, folding into itself, create a meshwork of erasures and semblances that make this second collection from Osman a triumph. Not only does Exiles of Eden look into the personal edges of grief and retrieval, but also pans internationally and mythically until the theme of exile blossoms like any epic trumpets forth like a burst of religion. I'm so grateful to the Hearst and Wright staff and board, to the judges, to all the nominees uh, for this incredible honor. Um, it's not something that I thought that I would experience. I think that recognition is very tough to come by in literature. Um, and this really does hit different and it means so much more to me because of who I make the work for, who it is that I want to hear and see the I in my writing, who I want to carry that lyric within them, and because of all the lyrics that I contain in me that have helped me to move forward. What a pleasure it is to be here presenting awards to an exceptional group of writers in the category of nonfiction. 
The submissions were fantastic. As this year's judges, Danielle Allen, Gerald Horn, and I had our work cut out for us. This important collection of nominees brings insight into the broad spectrum of blackness and the challenge of asserting our humanity in a racist society. The nominees are Open Season, Legalized Genocide of Colored People by Ben Crump, published by Amistad. Crump delivers an expose of America's legalized system of discrimination, documenting the destructive effects of racial profiling, mass incarceration, stand your ground laws, voter disenfranchisement, and environmental racism on black and brown people. Think Black, a memoir by Clyde Ford, published by Amistad. Ford tells the inspiring yet heartbreaking story of his father, John Stanley Ford, the first black software engineer at IBM, revealing how racism impacted his father's self-concept and their relationship. Wayward Lives, Beautiful Experiments, Intimate Histories of Riotous Black Girls, Troublesome Women, and Queer Radicals by Saidia Hartman, published by W.W. Norton and Company. Hartman recovers the forgotten history of young Black women living in New York and Philadelphia in the early 20th century, whose intimate lives and kinship bonds transgress the bounds of law and respectability. We Live for the We, The Political Power of Black Motherhood by Danny McLean, published by Bold Type Books. McLean explores the challenges and complexities of raising a Black daughter in an unjust society, hostile to people of color, as well as celebrates the, mo the joy of motherhood and children. Solitary, My Story of Transformation and Hope by Albert Woodfox, published by Grove Press. Solitary tells the story of Albert Woodfox, who spent four decades in solitary confinement for a crime he didn't commit. Woodfox's story is at once a testament to the human spirit and a call for criminal justice reform. What Doesn't Kill You Makes You Blacker, a memoir in essays by Damian Young, published by Echo. Through a series of deeply personal and critical essays, Young interrogates ever-changing definitions of what it means to be black and male in America. And the Legacy Award for Nonfiction goes to Solitary. My Story of Transformation and Hope by Albert Woodfox. Congratulations, Albert. Of tonight's nonfiction winner, Solitary, My Story of Transformation and Hope by Albert Woodfox, judges write the following. We have read, seen, or heard about many of the various threads of this story an innocent man, an unjust conviction, a youthful decision leading to the destruction of a life. We know that prisons are racist, corrupt, and brutal, and we are familiar with the fact of the torturous and soul-mutilating reality of solitary confinement. What we have never before experienced is how a writer and a life so steeped in political and educational awakening, so full of grace, beauty, and depth, weaves all of those threads into a whole that inspires and transforms. To read this book is to experience writing so precise that it beckons and envelops in moments so terrifying that all that is human within begs for mercy. Mr. Woodfox, as judges, we applaud you. As readers, we thank you. I'm honored to be the recipient of the Hurston Wright 2020 Legacy Award. Writing this book was a very difficult experience but it gave me an opportunity to bring to the American people the horrors of solitary confinement used in the American prison system. Thank you. These outstanding works of fiction examine the significance of community, family legacies, and the complicated layers of what it means to love. And the nominees are Speaking of Summer by Kalisha Buchanan, published by Counterpoint. Speaking of Summer portrays a vision of what it means to be a Black woman in America today through the gradual unraveling of Artem Spencer, who becomes obsessed with solving her sister's disappearance. Patsy by Nicole Dennis Bean, 
published by Liverite. Patsy explores the journey of a mother who leaves her child behind in Jamaica to find love and fortune in America, and the struggles of the child who grapples with her own questions of identity and sexuality. A Tall History of Sugar by Cordella Forbes, published by Acacia Books. A Tall History of Sugar follows the love between Moshe and Ariane that begins in childhood and moves from post-colonial Jamaica to England in the era of Brexit and Trumpism. Gingerbread by Helen Oyama, published by Riverhead Books. Gingerbread takes the fairy tale of Hansel and Greta and spins it on its axis, telling a fantastical tale of Harriet Lee and her daughter Perdita and their family legacy. The World Doesn't Require You by Rian Amakar Scott, published by Liverite. Set in the fictional Cross River, Maryland, this collection of stories depicts the life in the aftermath of America's only successful slave revolt, portraying racism and violence, along with moments of tenderness and humor. The Revisioners by Margaret Wilkerson Sexton, published by Counterpoint. Through the lives of two women set 100 years apart, the Revisioners explores the indignities and challenges Black women have always faced and their enduring ability to overcome and survive. And the winner is A Tall History of Sugar by Cardella Forbes. Judges wrote the following of tonight's fiction winner. A Tall History of Sugar is a tour de force, a poetic novel that captures the reader through its density and its way of questioning history and our identities as human beings. Cordella Forbes has brilliantly succeeded in portraying post-colonial Jamaican society through Moshe Fisher, a man born without skin, one of the original parables of our time. This moment, this award is truly humbling for me. In their writing, activism, and relation with other writers, Zora Neale Hurston and Richard Wright understood that peoples of the Black diaspora are united in a common labor to preserve our dignity and claim our right to choose our living, and yes, in a way, our dying too. I am honored to have my work noted in that labor. I am privileged to be among my fellow nominees, and I thank the judges and the foundation for honoring our work in this moment. I thank our publishers, my publisher, Akashic Books, um, our readers and you, the audience, for making this moment possible. I thank my fellow nominees for sharing your dangerous creations with us. You make us a little larger than ourselves. Thank you. Hello. What a pleasure to be here this evening. I am Chigozi Obioma, and I'm here to present the Debut Fiction Award. These three outstanding groups explore the significance of family with compelling characters struggling to find their way to harsh and often unforgiving landscapes. The nominees are A Very Cold is a Snake, a Thief, a Liar, by Ron A. Austin, published by Southwest Missouri State University Press. This semi-autobiographical collection of linked stories follows the misadventures of every cult, a series of trials and tribulations along with family and community shape Avery's growth into manhood. Very interesting read. The second one is Africa Vile by Geoffrey Colvin published by Amistad. Africa Veal delves deep into racial identity and the black experience through three generations of the Sebald family, beginning a small enclave in Canada and moving to the deep south. The third one is As a River by Sion Desen, published by Jaded Ibris Press. In As a River, Graham Michaels returns to his childhood home to tend to his ailing mother and comes face to face 
with family secrets and himself. Now, I enjoyed reading all these three novels and it was a very difficult choice to make. Myself and the judges, uh, my colleagues who judged, uh, deliberated and deliberated for a long time. But at the end, the winner of the Debut Fiction Award is Africa Veal by Geoffrey Colvin. Judges write, working on a large canvas, Jeffrey Colvin's Africaville reconstructs a little known once thriving black town in Canada through the life of a black woman, Kath Selbutt, and three generations of her progenies over the span of nearly a century. A consummate portraitist, Colvin embraces his characters and paints the length and breadth of their lives. In prose both sharp and striking, he shows how small events affect not only just who we become, but those who come after us. This is a novel of true ambition and grace. Hello, everyone. I'm extremely honored and grateful to receive a Zora Neale Hurston Richard Wright Foundation Legacy Award. This honor is even more gratifying since the foundation supported and encouraged me long before I had the confidence to believe I might become a published novelist, let alone receive any recognition. Way back in 1999, the support and encouragement I received during a Hurston Wright Foundation's Summer Writers Week helped sustain me over the two decades I spent working on my debut novel, Africaville. A big thank you to my agent, Aisha Pande, and my editor at Amistad Press, Patrick Bass, to the board and staff of the foundation, and especially to Marita Golden. And finally, I'd like to thank the residents of the former village of Africville, Nova Scotia, and the residents of former Black communities all over the world who inspire and strengthen all who hear their stories. Thank you. When I think Hurston Wright, I think about it as Blackness. And when I think about Blackness, I think beauty. And first was introduced to the wonderful world of Wright's writing. I have this 25 cent copy of Uncle Tom's Children. The cover is coming off. This is a vintage copy that I read in my dorm room at Howard and literally cried. And I remember my first time reading Their Eyes Were Watching God in high school and feeling so, so, so empowered and transformed by the message in Hurston's word. I wouldn't be here if I hadn't read Richard Wright in a sophomore philosophy class. His words both challenged and understood me. The Hurston Wright Foundation is one of the institutions that helps us bear whatever happens on the outside because its existence reminds us that there is still respite, still peace, and still people pushing forward. And we have still been able to create beauty. We have still been able to create work with rigor and with care and with love and with passion and with joy. We have an organization that caters to people like me who were already in search of Zora and Richard and everyone like them. And I remember coming to Hurston Wright that summer because I was in search of a community, of a writing community um, with people of color. Uh, because at the time, I did not feel um, like my MFA program was as inclusive. And so it was really important for me to be empowered, to be encouraged. I'm sending waves and waves of gratitude to the Hurston Wright Foundation for nurturing the visibility and audibility of black writing. The Hurston Wright Foundation is such an important institution and one of the few that uplifts and nurtures black writers. And in this time, it's so necessary for people to realize that the work we do as black writers is revolutionary. And now more than ever, we need organizations like the Hurston Wright Foundation to continue to light the way towards community and coalition building so that we can all get free. You pick up a book, you are in community with um, with another mind, um, and, it, and when you see your thoughts reflected back uh, in in a, in a way that you never expected to to, to see your, yourself or your thoughts reflected back, um, man, it, you can just feel so less alone in this world, uh, and it's that's such a beautiful thing. Hurston Wright recognizes our diversity, our ability to tell many stories that describe all different facets of blackness. And Black literature matters because it helps all readers realize that Black lives matter. 
It is not lost on me that the Hurston Wright Foundation has championed African-American voices when our talents and efforts were unrecognized by the rest of the world. I continue to feel most humbled and most honored by your acknowledgement. Because I have the privilege of standing behind and alongside writers who have taught me, who have comforted me, and who've helped me see myself. We make this work for each other, and so it's a big deal to stand together in celebration. I know that you will continue to inspire and support readers and writers during these difficult times and far into the future. Now more than ever, we need organizations like the Hurston Wright Foundation that recognizes, uplifts, and honors our stories. There is a reckoning happening right now. And through our words and narratives and art, we can be part of the change that is so desperately needed. Writers can be the conscience, the moral compass. We can share beauty and joy and truth and vision. I am extremely honored, profoundly thankful, and understand that I have more work to do. Let's continue to uh, write the world as we see it. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you, Johnny, for that great performance. And congratulations again to all our 2020 award recipients and nominees. For some final words, please welcome back Chair of the Hurston Wright Foundation Board of Directors, Audrey Hipkins. What an amazing evening, our first ever virtual Legacy Awards. Let me start by thanking everyone who made this possible. First, our nominees for that incredible body of work, our judges who took the time to read it, Keith Boykins, our MC, 
Johnny Britt for our musical entertainment. Our sponsors, especially Penguin Random House, Amistad Books, and ESPN's The Undefeated, our board of directors, our staff who did a yeoman's job, our production team who worked behind the scenes, and everyone who purchased a ticket and took time to celebrate with us tonight. We depend on you and we appreciate all that you do, especially during these difficult times. Please consider supporting us in the future with an additional donation so we can continue to provide a safe space for Black writers to develop and hone their craft. Finally, submissions are open for 2021 Legacy Awards, the College Award, and the Crossover Award. Thank you again for joining us to celebrate the best in Black literature. Have a wonderful evening.